Today I want to talk about something that not a lot of people talk about. Namely, that homophobia, or rather, I prefer hostility towards homosexual men, is uh, female in origin. It's gynocentric. And if you think about it, the reasons why that's the case uh, are pretty obvious. It's, uh, in fact, clear that hostility towards the homosexual man is uh, not a at least direct or original manifestation of uh, something stemming from heterosexual men. And to make this clear, let me explain. <clears throat> One needs to think about the symbolism of the homosexual man. Now, no matter how good you get at going your own way, at uh, mastering your psyche, mastering your instincts. When I go to the gym and I see uh, women, you know, wearing sports bras and tight spandex, I still pay attention. I mean, it's just instinct. It's, uh, it's hard not to notice. Um, the jiggly bum bum. Uh, those of you who know Mass Effect might know that uh, illusion. But uh, anyway, it's, you know, you notice these things. You know, women in short skirts, uh, huge tits hanging out of their out of their cleavage. I mean, you notice these things. Now, of course, you, you learn to master your instincts as time goes on, and you learn to not pay it that much mind. But it still is an issue in the sense that you still have an instinctual uh, drive to shift your glance, to cast a glance at that spectacle. But what does the homosexual man represent in that context. He represents, at least symbolically, and in theory at least, a man who is completely immune to any sort of temptation in this regard. He has uh, effectively no desire whatsoever, so the woman who is jiggling her jugs and uh, swaying her ass, this has no effect on him. He's completely immune to it. And so what I'm saying is that the homosexual man is a man who exists outside of the influence, at least the direct influence, of the female. Now, and we all know that for most of us heterosexual men, 99% of us, uh, we, we haven't, we, I, mean, I have to a uh, limited extent, many of you have, but most men certainly haven't mastered their inner beast, their psyche. I mean... They see a pair of tits and they, they jump up like uh, like feral dogs, essentially. I mean, that, that's that's how the level, level of primitiveness that they've still uh, attached themselves to. Now, with regards to gay men, though, homosexual, there is simply no temptation. They're not interested in tits and ass, quite frankly, or tits and pussy. I mean, they're not. They, by definition, are not pussy beggars, and they don't have. They have no desire to acquire pussy. What does this represent for the female? This re represents a man who exists outside the sphere of her influence. A man who cannot be controlled by her cleavage, by her physicality, by her physical appearance, by her so-called beauty. Heterosexual men are readily and constantly controlled by this. In fact, hetero heterosexual men exist to serve women because of this, because of their physical attraction and because of their uh, need for reproductive resources. Homosexual man exists outside of this paradigm. Thus, the homosexual man in many ways is a threat to the female. Remember, women want to keep everything under control, their firm control. They don't like men doing their own thing. A man who has who not only does his own thing, but has no sexual interest, i.e. no interest, period, in association with the female, per se, unless perhaps it's through work or what have you, it represents an incredible threat. There's nothing she can do, at least in, using conventional means, to get him under her control, to get him under her spell. There's nothing she can do. She could wear a short shirt, you know, going up to her hips, have, uh, you know, an F cup hanging out, and he doesn't care. So, this is where it starts. This is why I ultimately believe that 
homophobia or hostility towards uh, homosexual men is a female manifestation, gynocentric in origin, because the homosexual man represents a man that ex exists outside the sphere of her influence, no matter what she does, at least direct influence. So what does she try to do? She tries to influence it indirectly. And this results in a, uh, a feeling of terror in heterosexual men that they might be dubbed gay. Because to be dubbed gay as a heterosexual man is to effectively be kicked out of the dominance hierarchy. It's not that you're at the bottom rungs of the dominance hierarchy if you're dubbed gay. It's because uh, you don't, you're not even in the dominance hierarchy. You're not even in the state of competition. You simply exist outside of it. And that is something that actually women fear in men and the homosexual men because they don't give a shit about women in that sense. But that's certainly something that heterosexual men do fear. They fear being given this title because if they are given the title, they're no longer in the game. They no longer can even compete. Like I said, they're not even at the bottom rung of the ladder. They're just not there, period. And this is a kind of subliminal psychological suggestion on the part of the female. The female imparts fear, legitimate, I mean, their legitimate fear, and turns in, it's, it's sort of like a simulacrum, essentially. It's, 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 it's the female's actual fear transferred onto the male, the heterosexual male, in the form of simulacrum, and the male manifests the same fear because he doesn't want to be cast out of the dominance hierarchy. He doesn't want to lose access to reproductive resources. And so what you end up with is an irrational, female-oriented uh, uh, fear and oftentimes hatred of homosexuals, and in particular of being labeled, it, uh, labeled such themselves. Many men are they're terrified of being called gay. And you can see this constantly when you decline a woman's uh, so-called interest in you, when you say you're not interested or even make statements like, oh, I prefer being single or what have you, uh, what's one of the first things she says? Are you gay? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this sort of double entendre. Are you gay? There's nothing wrong with that. I had this uh, conversation with this girl I play with uh, games sometimes online, uh, and I didn't want to get not too many details. I said, you know, no, I'm just kind of done with relationships. I just prefer uh, doing my own thing. And uh, she said, well, are you gay? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So, so the, this this automatic, it's, it's an attempt to shame heterose heterosexual men. Right? Because heterosexual men are terrified of be losing access to reproductive resources. I mean, once you've mastered your psyche to a certain point and you understand the games and the mechanics that women apply and employ, then it doesn't have any effect anymore. But for most men, your conventional pussy-begging uh, mangina men, this is just terrifying. To be, to be called gay means you're not even in the game anymore, and you're not even competing anymore, and you can't even get any woman. Uh, it doesn't matter low, uh, low, lowly-born or, or high-born. So uh, that, that is a, a feeling of terror that women instill in heterosexual men because no man wants to be cast out of the dominance hierarchy. But think about what the homosexual man represents for the heterosexual man. There's no reason in a rational sense that a heterosexual man should have any fear, hatred, or any feeling for that matter uh, towards uh, homosexual men. They don't represent anything. In fact, most uh, rationally speaking, the homosexual man uh, is a boon to the heterosexual man because he represents one last less man that he has to compete against in order to get reproductive resources. But for the, for the woman, for the woman, the homosexual man is a threat because he cannot be controlled by her conventional means. And her conventional means are usually effective in controlling, well, almost everyone, almost every male, every male on the planet, barring the homosexual male. So she resorts to dirty tactics, psychological manipulation. She instills fear in the heterosexual man of being called something he isn't uh, for fear that's 
someone might actually believe that he is that. And all the while, this creates a negative attitude towards homosexuality, and like I said, homosexuality is completely benign with regards to their position in relation to heterosexual men, because like I said, they are effectively a boon in a reproductive sense. They're not competing against heterosexual men for female reproductive resources. Why would they? Of course, there are other aspects to this. So, as I mentioned in my previous video, uh, you know, if, 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 if men embrace each other in a hug, they're often, you know, they'll be referred to as gay. And men are terrified of physical contact with each other for fear of being called gay. They're terrified of it. They're particularly terrified of when, uh, not that when other men view them uh, as gay, but they, between men, when you know, men call heterosexual men call each other gay, they, uh, they it's, it's, it doesn't carry the same weight as when a female calls uh, calls them gay. So they're terrified of. It. They avoid it at all costs, and all of this uh, harks back to the female instilled fear uh, that they might be cast out of the dominance hierarchy. So remember homophobia, or whatever you want to call it, the, the distaste for homosexuality, is almost certainly a female uh, of a, f a female origin. This, uh, because what you cannot control, you know, conventionally at least, you begin to hate, at least from the female position. That, that's why I mean, for example, all these insults are hurled at men going their own way, because men going their own way don't really give a shit what women say anymore. So you have the sh various shaming tactics, can't get laid, and, you know, uh, a first or a, cl or, or a close second is, oh, you must be gay. Um, and then, of course, they try to pad it up by saying, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this is a very common phenomenon. Now, all I'm saying here is that the heterosexual male's fear of being labeled or dubbed gay is not his own. It's uh, a fear that's been transferred to him by the gynocentric uh, Borg consensus, if you will. <laughs> but there is, of course, a more complicated aspect to a lot of this. And let's not uh, kid ourselves. I mean, uh, I agree with Barbarossa that the gay rights movement is a distant or even close cousin of feminism. But as you can see in the image, I mean, feminism in the 60s and 70s tried to pick up a, a just a just huge uh, swathes of disparate ethnic groups, minority groups. And this is for the same reason, because women realized they couldn't control these groups directly. And so to assim assimilate them into the so-called greater cause by dint of association is a less effective, however, still a means of controlling them. So many uh, homosexual men fell for this, no doubt. But, I mean, I, I have some good friends in uh, real life who happen to be gay, and they, they balk at this. I mean, they're not, they don't buy it. And I think that is a... Well, the, actually the standard position, uh, because a homosexual man by his very nature is not influenced by the female. But in an attempt to gain control, some form of control, over the homosexual man, women knowingly, capital F feminists primarily, uh, try to assimilate the groups in the 60s, 70s, and even to the 80s and 90s, persist to this day, into their cause, to say that the feminist cause is also the the uh, the gay cause. I mean, they're totally unrelated. I mean, and people people have a natural weakness to uh, to submit to a sort of victimhood narrative. I mean, they people like being victims, and no one's uh, completely immune. And of course, I rebuke the claim that MGTOW, MGTOW in any sh way, shape, or form is uh, one, of, one of those uh, victimhood uh, movements, because we just say, well, we're tired, everyone, we just get on, get on with our lives, we're not trying to change the system, we're trying to get out of Dodge, essentially. That's neither here nor there. But uh, so many, it's, it's, very, it's, very not, it's very natural for many people, and my, various minority groups, um, 
you know, the civil rights movement in many ways. The, the, the justice of the civil rights movement was co-opted by the nefariousness of capital F politicized feminism, as you can see in the image. So, and uh, I don't know if you know, you guys know Tommy Sotomayor, he, uh, he's a guy who, I guess he's a radio host, I'm subscribed to him, he does some interesting stuff, uh, it's very much focused on the black community, which I find, you know, limiting. Um, I often puzzle that these guys who make videos about these male-female relation issues in the, in the black community are not seeing the bigger picture, but I can understand why they're focusing on that. Uh, and he did an entire video on this uh, this concept of, you know, it's particularly virulent, he says, I'm not familiar with it directly, in the black community that women, black women, will refer to as black men as gay if they decline their uh, their sexual advances or their interests, or they simply say, well, I'm not interested, period. But you see this, I mean, across the board. This is not a, a black, white, Asian. This is just a universal. Um, and so anyway, I'll uh, I'll post a link to his channel just in case. Some of you might, of you might not know it. Some of you might know it. Uh, Tommy Sotomayor. Uh, I think he does pretty good stuff. And in my opinion, anyone who tries to get the word out that there's something screwing the system, even if it's a, a minor aspect of it or a smaller aspect of it, is fine. So yeah, the, in, in summary... Uh, in summary, the simple fact is that it's very clear, given if you look back to the roots, you know, following follow the money trail, in this case the trail of the golden uterus, who is responsible for creating an atmosphere of intolerance, hatred in some cases, uh, towards the homosexual man? I'm not talking about the one who's affiliated with feminists, I'm talking about the independent homosexual man uh, who is completely immune to the wiles and powers of the female. He doesn't care about tits and ass. And, of course, a woman is then motivated to use shaming tactics, psychological manipulation, and that is then projected onto the heterosexual man. Not the, I mean, the homosexual man ex exists, the, the guy who's, who's just essentially a, a homosexual man going his own way. He exists outside the bounds of her power. So what does she do? She projects her own fears, her own insecurities, her own inability to control that kind of man onto a heterosexual man who are just terrified of being jettisoned out of the dominant hierarchy. Anyway, there I might talk a little bit more about this on a future date, but these are some some thoughts I had recently, in particular in regards to a conversation I had that I mentioned. But uh, more to come, likely in the future, on this and many other topics. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.